Hello, I am the CEO, and I have called you here for CEO business. Why won't you sponsor me, Webtoons? Sponsor me! Oh, not them again. Security, come get this peasant. Oof. Foiled. Again. Hello, how's it going? Today I'm going to tell you how to make line art for your webcomic or your webtoon. So the first and easiest and best way to do your line art is just to have someone do it for you. Unfortunately, I'm poor, so I'm going to have to tell you how to do it my way, which is do-it-yourself way. Now, for me, line art is my least favorite part of the whole webcomic process, so it's also the process that takes me the longest, which is very depressing. But here are the steps that I do to try and speed it up and make it easier and less painful. The first step is to have a clean sketch. And you want a clean sketch so that way whenever you're doing your line art, you don't have to think about it and you don't have to correct stuff as you're going. You have the basics already there. All you need to do is just follow it and you don't have to think about it too hard. When it comes to the tech you use, it's really important what you're comfortable with and what you can afford also plays a role in what you use. A lot of webcomic artists use screen tablets and if you have one, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. I currently don't make my webcomic with a screen tablet. I'd like to upgrade in the future, but right now I just have a regular bamboo flat tablet that doesn't have a screen and it works just fine for what I'm doing. I bought it quite a few years ago and it still works basically the same as when I got it, so bamboo brands are really good about lasting for a really long time. I've had two bamboo tablets in my lifetime and both of them lasted a very long time. I don't really have experience with other brands, so you'll have to check other YouTube videos to see which brands are comparable. I personally haven't experienced any others, so all I know is bamboo and that it's good, and the ones that I got weren't the expensive ones because I bought them back in high school or even middle school, so I didn't have the highest funds. So for the price, they've lasted a really long time and they're really good. So yeah, that's my two cents on the tablet. For software, I use Clip Studio Paint, and it's probably the best software I've used to make comics. It has everything you need. There's an asset store, and you can import 3D models that you make yourself. You can import pretty much everything. It's a really good software, and I use the Pro, which I think is $45, $50, and sometimes it'll go on sale for $20, $25, and it's a really good software to use. I definitely recommend it if you don't already have it. When I make line art, I use the mapping pen. It's just my favorite. I like using it more than the other ones. But if you have another pen that you like to use on your line art, for example, the G pen or anything, turnip pen, whatever else, if you downloaded one off the asset store, that's fine. It's important that you're comfortable with the pen and you like how it looks. And if you have both of those qualifications, then it's all good. Use whatever you want. And here comes the most important step in the entire thing, which is a very tough pill for me to take because it goes against everything, everything I know and everything I love about making digital art, which is making gigantic panels and gigantic files and just gigantic everything. The thing the size of billboards. You can't do that whenever you make a webcomic because it will take you forever. And it used to take me way, way longer to do my line art because my file size and my panel size would just be ginormous. And it's kind of like if you took into account how long would it take you to draw on a notebook or a sketchbook and how long would it take you to draw the exact same image on a billboard? It would take you much longer. It's the exact same thing. So you need to shrink that billboard down into a smaller size so shrink your canvas. I'll put what sizes I use and which ones I found the best. They're a little bit bigger than the webtoon size, so that way, you know, whenever it shrinks, it, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit bigger, but it's much smaller than what I was doing, and that helps speeds up the process so, so much. If you notice that the file size is very long, that's because it's a scrolling format. You cut that up before you post it. Also, what goes along with having smaller file sizes is having smaller panels. And if you're making a webcomic and the characters are just talking back and forth, there's no reason that the panel needs to be the whole size of the page. Because that, you know, it takes longer and all that kind of stuff. If they're just talking, like, you can speed it up 
speed up the process of making the comic and reading the comic and getting through the dialogue much faster if you have smaller panels. I'll put some examples up. But if the panels are smaller, you can get through scenes. And then for the big dramatic scenes that are really important, that's whenever you do the big panels that take up the whole page. For example, if you're in a fight scene, like in Naruto, whenever he does the Takno Jutsu, have the Takno Jutsu be in these little tiny panels so they can talk, 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 talk. But then whenever Naruto like uses Rasengan or whatever, you have that in the big panel that they have to scroll down through to see and it's real dramatic and it causes all this ambience. You know, it's all about the cinematography because similar to in movies, you are telling a story with pictures and dialogue instead of a book where you can describe everything. This is just, you're showing them pictures and the pictures have to matter and get the point across. Okay, get it? You're good? We're good? Good. After we've sorted out the size, the sketch, and all of that hullabaloo, we can finally get down to actually making the line art. Hooray! The most important part about making your line art for a webtoon is it doesn't have to be perfect. I know, I know, we're all perfectionists and it's very difficult to live with the fact that it doesn't have to be perfect, or at least for me, it's difficult to live with that fact, but it's okay, it'll be fine. They're only gonna look at the panel for two seconds anyway, so what does it matter? So you can just let your hand be free and go along with your sketch and it'll be fine as long as it looks good from a distance and not from like zoomed in super tight. Who cares about what it looks like zoomed in to the umph degree? As long as it looks good from that distance while they're reading it, you're fine. It's good. They're going to view it and they're going to be like, oh, yay or a or whatever the heck they say. Point is, it'll be okay. Everything will be okay. You just have to get through it and everything will be good eventually. It'll be fine. That's what I tell myself every day. So we let our hands guide us to make the line art and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it follows the basic sketch and looks pretty good from a distance and the coloring will make up for a whole lot. Then we got nothing to worry about. We've done our line art. And aside from doing the regular with your hand just going over the sketch, you can also use the curve tools which also make the process easy and some people will say but that's cheating no it's not it's only cheating if you are taking an image from somebody else's comic and tracing over it or uploading it and saying that it's yours if it's not copyright or you're not taking or stealing it's fine it's not cheating those tools are there it's fine nobody notices nobody's going to notice if it speeds you up and it makes your art look good no one will notice I mean, there are some comics where I just use the curve tool for the entire thing because I just can't be bothered that day and my hands are just like, I don't want to. So I'm like, fine, but we have to, so I'll just use the curve tool. And I do, and it looks fine and nobody's noticed. So if nobody's noticed for mine, they're not going to notice. And you're not cheating, you're not doing anything wrong. The tools are there, it's fine. And while we're on the topic of cheating, there's also shortcuts. For example, whenever you make one eye, you just copy, paste, and adjust it for the other eye. That's fine too. It speeds up the process. It's all good. It's all good. Whatever speeds up that process and helps you get done with the line art faster is all good as long as you're doing it all by yourself. So once you've become comfortable with yourself and your line art and how you create your line art, that's you've pretty much covered half the battle. The other half of the battle is repeating those steps until either you and your comic are just done. You just repeat that over and over and eventually your so many panels for that update will be done and then you can color it and you can be like yay I'm not doing light art anymore and then you know it'll take you a day to finish coloring so then you can put it on your patreon or post it or whatever the heck you do with it and then you can be like now now I get to sketch again and then I'll have to do line art again Hooray! Another week has gone, and I just get to do line art all the time. It's glorious. Yay! But then eventually, you know, you'll maybe make enough money where you can hire someone else to do your line art. And that's the one shred of hope that I hold on to. Coming back from my loathing of line art, there's one more tip that I can include in here that's very useful. Whenever you make your layer that has, like, the bodies, which I do multiple layers depending on what I'm drawing, and for the bodies and clothing and stuff, that goes on one layer. And then I'll do the eyes, hair, and all that stuff on different layers. 
Well, whenever I do the bottom layer, which is the body, I will put a masking layer on it, and whenever I need to erase stuff because of the hair or whatever, I'll erase it in the mask so that way it's non-destructive. And that's something I was taught in graphic design classes. You always want to be non-destructive with your art because if you erase part of that with the hair and then you're like, oh crap, I don't like the hair, I want to redo it, then you're going to have to redraw the body part of the drawing and it's going to take more time to do that because, you know, you're going to have to redo all of it. But if you had that masking layer, then you can just reveal that part of the drawing that was hidden by the mask and you'll be all good. And then you can draw the hair again and you won't have to redo anything. So yeah, that's another very helpful tip that I do with line art so I don't have to redo if I mess up. Yeah, there's my tip. Don't be destructive, be non-destructive. Hooray. Those are my tips for making line art and I'll put them together more concise right here, which are make sure your sketch is clean, make sure you have a tablet and a brush that you're comfortable with, keep your file size small, and use smaller panels when there's smaller scenes going on so you can get through them and use the bigger panels for the more dramatic scenes to have contrast and draw attention. Having smaller panels helps speed up your line art very much. Most importantly, your line art does not have to be perfect. As long as it looks good from that distance while people are reading or while you're reading, then it's fine. You don't have to worry about focusing way in, zoomed in to how the line art looks. As long as it's good from that distance, then you're good. Side note, it's okay to use the line tool and it's okay to use shortcuts. For example, flipping the face or using the line tool to make things faster, completely okay. Also use layer mask and don't be destructive. And that's it. Just repeat this process over and over and you will have made an entire webcomic with line art. Huzzah! I hope these tips were helpful. See you next time. I hope you get the weather. Shit.